Mortal Kombat Legends, Scorpion's Revenge. All right, let's talk about this one. So I've been wanting to check this one out for a while now. When it first came out last year, because yes, it is the first day of the new year. I'm sure by the time I have this video up, it will be uh, January 2nd. Uh, but anyways, um, I, I heard a lot of good things about a uh, Scorpion's Revenge. It was quite talked about on social media. People were saying it was good. And I'm a sometimes Mortal Kombat fan. I wouldn't call myself like a die-hard like a gamer of Mortal Kombat, but um, I do I do enjoy the games. I do enjoy the story of the games. I do enjoy the characters and the lore of Mortal Kombat because that's the thing about Mortal Kombat is it has a lot of lore to it which is what makes um, each installment fresh because there's always a new layer of the story to tell. And Mortal Kombat has came a long way since when it first came out in, uh, when was it, 1990? It was 1990 or 1991, I'm pretty sure. I feel like, um, I feel like I'm going to get that wrong. But um, like when the first Mortal Kombat game came out, it was all like pixelated and... Um, and it wasn't as gory as today's generation of Mortal Kombat games. It wasn't until, um, I, this, this I'm sure I'm going to be 100% wrong on, but um, this is just from my own knowledge of Mortal Kombat. Um, I believe Mortal Kombat 9 was the first uh, Mortal Kombat game when they really went for it, when they really went for the gore and the blood and the fatalities and they really and they really ramped it up to like a hundred and then they've just continued that on with Mortal Kombat 10 and 11 and now there's like Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate Edition with the uh, Terminator and Robocop and some other ex expansions on it which is on PS5 now so um so yeah uh, um I was really excited to check this movie out and um, I went to Big W today and this movie was only $4 and at, and at other shops I went to it was like $15 and I was just like yeah no I'm not paying that when I can buy it for $4 so um, yeah so I bought this because I wanted to check it out so let's talk about it so I did take some notes down as I was watching it so i'm just going to kind of go through each of my little notes and i took um i took 17 notes throughout the movie so i'm just kind of gonna i'm just gonna go through each one and talk a little bit about it so and the first one i have here was the opening scene is packed with um surprises and twists and turns so yeah the opening scene like it like this from as soon as it starts you are into the shit like you have x-rays happening you have blood and gore galore happening on screen and in the first five minutes of this movie you can tell you know the movie you're about to get um and in the first five minutes it's very faithful to its source material um it's like the the x-rays like really all throughout this movie i will talk more about the x-rays like i don't want to i don't want to give everything away regarding the x-rays just on my first point the x-ray attack moves aren't just all throughout this movie they're more scattered through certain parts in this movie and that's how it's kind of um done in the games as well is you have to fill up your your power bar um, before you can do your x-ray attack move and in this movie it only happens like a handful of times and for the most part it's like it's cutting off limbs and then that does build to a x-ray attack like sometimes you will see you will see like the the skull like the bones inside the skull break you will see your bones break and you do get that a visual of it and when it does happen in this movie it looks exactly like the game of course when making a movie based on a video game there are going to be um, similarities and comparisons and differences 
um, that you will have to do making it into a movie both like fans of the games and people who are just general movie goers. But I feel like this movie is mainly uh, is mainly made for the people who are familiar, who actually play the Mortal Kombat games, who are invested in the Mortal Kombat lore. Because um, if you don't play the games, like I can see this movie maybe being a bit confusing, even though this movie does take it back to the first tournament. Um, of these characters meeting. But just to yeah, finish off my first point about the opening scene, um, it ends with um, Sub-Zero killing Scorpion. And I was just like, wait, what? Is Scorpion actually dead now? Since his name is on the cover of this movie, uh, it says here, Scorpion's Revenge. Like, is the main character dead? Like, this isn't like the first movie I've seen where the main character does does die, but um, I was just like, since this is his story, he's dead already, but um, yeah, he does come back in, he does come back into play once the, um, once the competitors do get to this island, and they do get into the tournament, um, Scorpion is there with him to get revenge on Sub-Zero for killing his, for killing his son and wife, which we will get to. Um, so yeah, that was like, that was a big like shock, I was just like, wow, that is a bold move, killing off your titled character. So, but yeah, they didn't do that. Um, the second point I've written down here is, Scorpion's Revenge is faithful to its source material, it captures the X-ray attacks and gore, which it definitely does, like this film is gory, it really goes for it, like 110%. Um, it's whenever you see like Scorpion or any of the other uh, opponents um, cutting off limbs, it is very gory, it is very in your face, which is what the games are in today's generation of more combat games they are very gory they are very in your face they do make you wince um which is what this movie captures very well and as i said before like the x-ray attacks was probably the biggest surprise like i didn't expect um more combat legends scorpion's revenge to be as gory as it was for an animation movie where it's um, where it's where it's very much in line with what the games are, and like I didn't expect it to be as gory, but I was glad, both as a fan of the more combat games and as a movie goer, I was happy with what they did with the X-ray attacks and the gore in this movie, because this movie is not made for kids. That is for sure. Uh, what else do I have here? Uh, um, the animation, the animation in this movie is on point. This is the best a Mortal Kombat movie can look in animation and we will be getting another Mortal Kombat movie this year in April. So this movie is going to have to hold us off until April when we do get our but our third live action Mortal Kombat movie to the big screen because we had the Paul W.S. Anderson one in 1995 and then we had Mortal Kombat Annihilation and now they're making it with uh, with today's, um, well, they're making it um, following more of today's Mortal more Kombat games and like the cast have already said that the fatalities do live up to the games and that they are and that I remember reading something with the cast where they said like that they they threw up at just looking at it so that gives me hope that's one of the main reasons for why I am excited because we we could be getting our first um since 1995 our first um faithful live action Mortal Kombat movie um but yeah, the animation, it's just uh, just like the, the colour scheme, the whole design of these different locations, it just, it all comes into play on screen really well. I thought the animation style, it really fit the story direction that they took this movie, 
And uh, I think this is the best a Mortal Kombat movie could ever look on screen in animation, maybe. Um, like, I can't see any other, like, Mortal Kombat movie, like, beating this. But, yeah, like, that, they really, they really impressed me. So, bravo to the animation um, design behind this movie. Like, bravo to you. You did a magnificent job on the animation here. Um, it really impressed me. Uh, film takes place during the first tournament. How these characters met. Yeah, I've already talked about that. X-ray attacks look straight out of the video game. But yeah, it's just like the, the way, just like the timing and the pacing of the X-ray attacks. Like this just kind of comes more into play uh, by what I mean by it happens only a handful of times throughout this movie. Um, and when they do happen, like they they don't shy away. Like they this it's almost it's almost if not as graphic as it is in the video games. It's like they took the video games and copied and pasted it on screen. Like that's how damn good the like that's how damn good like the the extra attacks and the gore and the animation and and it just looks all really good. It just looks like they took a like. They, they took an exact replica of um, of a fight from the video games that's copied and pasted it on screen in the most faithful way, which is what they do here. Introduction to Johnny Cage is classic Johnny Cage. It's what we have come to expect from him. But yeah, Johnny Cage is, if not, the show stealer here. He gives some of the best lines. Um, and he has some really good banter with Raiden and some of the other opponents when they're on the boat going to this island. Um, and he just has so many lines that are just like, that, that is the Johnny Cage us Mortal Kombat fans know from the video games. And the voice actor who did Johnny Cage, well done to him. Like, I didn't write his name down here, but... Yeah, well done to the voice actor of Johnny Cage because he, um, I thought he did a really good job. And um, obviously, you know, obviously, you know, like Johnny Cage is, is he's trying to get all the attention. He thinks he's on a movie set when he gets here, and then there's a point in this movie where he's just like, um, well, this guy just attacked me, um, and I don't think this is a movie anymore. And it's just, it's just like that is so Johnny Cage. Like that's what Johnny Cage would do and like obviously you know he's like he's the guy who's trying to get all the girls and so he's trying to crush on um sonya and there's a couple of times where like sonya is fighting or yelling something and johnny cage is just there like oh she's hot and i was, I was just like Eesh. like that is johnny cage in Mortal Kombat. there's just like many parts where like he's like annoying so uh, annoying sonya and he gets kicked in the balls and there's some really highly entertaining sequences with Johnny Cage, especially. Um, so, uh, good banter on the boat with Johnny Cage. Everyone is rolling their eyes at how clumsy and lazy Johnny Cage is. Because, like, everyone is on this boat for a reason. Like, everybody has a hidden talent, or everybody, or some of them already know their powers. Johnny Cage is one of the people like when he first arrives like he trips over and everybody's just like oh because like like there's nothing special to this guy like at first but then there's a point when he's versing um oh uh, did i write his name down uh no i did not but there's a point where johnny cage is fighting like sonya uh what, was was sonya down or was she like um uh, like hurt and I think uh, Johnny Cage took the took the upper hand and you see him like like fist balling like all of all of these like creatures and, and like and then that's a, then that's the point where Sonya and both the viewers are like Johnny Cage can do some serious ass so um yeah that's the, that's the scene when his character really changes so he goes from this guy just being like from being like a smart ass at the beginning to this guy who's like starting to take who's starting to take like the Mortal Kombat tournament like a little bit seriously but he still has like that 
he still has like that smart ass humor side to him, which I thought was really good. And like almost every fight with a Johnny Cage, it ends and with Sonya, like it ends with a punchline, which is how it and which is how it ends in the game after it comes up saying like fatality or or just like or Sonya wins or Johnny Cage wins like at the end of the games like there's always like that punchline before they continue on um which is one thing that I thought this this movie did really well um there's a scene at the beginning where where you have a test your might sequence like there's those little like side missions in Mortal Kombat where it's like test your strength test your might and like it's only on screen for like a couple of seconds and so yeah, that I thought was really cool uh the one lines from Johnny Cage are one of the greatest things in this movie yeah like Johnny Cage like he has this on screen charm um, to him, and there's this, this, this like he's one of the funnier characters in this movie because everyone else is just like it is very dark. They've come from some sort of a past and they're entering this tournament um, to do something. And in the case of our main characters, uh, Scorpion, he's there to kill Sub Zero. Like that's his mission for killing his son in the opening scene. And so, like, he, he's really, he's really pissed off. And anger and frustration building inside of Scorpion. Like, whenever he sees Sub Zero, he views him as, as the guy who killed his son and wife. And really, that's all he views him as. And so, there's a level of urgency for Scorpion's character. Like, you really, you're on Scorpion's side in this movie. Like, you want him to kill Sub Zero. You want him to get revenge. Uh, like, that does change in the middle portion of this movie, which I will talk about. Um, what was that up to? So, yeah, the first battle in this movie is between Jax versus Goro. And Goro tears. Um, Jax's arms right off like as you know in the games um, Jax gets like bionic arms like in this movie like I thought like maybe like we might see him like maybe in the last 10 minutes um, get the bionic arms but I feel like they're saving that for the sequel then Raiden interferes with the game to stop uh, Goro from finishing Jax um, because Goro was going to kill Jax if it wasn't for Raiden, who basically saved Jax's, uh, life. Um, and then there's a line from Johnny Cage where he says, Eat me, buttercup. Um, and that's between his fight with Buraka. And, like, I thought, like, that's just, like, what I mean. It's just, like, it's those little one-liners that Johnny Cage says that. He has such, like, a bright personality he has this like a charm and he has like such a likable but like hated presence like by like the like by the um more by the rest of the Mortal Kombat opponents and but he just is there something that's like really like funny about his character like he just he, he, he brings like this this, en this energy and like he's not really qu he's not really sure what he's in for here um, but yeah, then like uh, Raiden like was teased um, throughout this movie that Johnny Cage like does have a power. It just might take a while for that to unleash, which um, Raiden was right because Raiden was like Raiden was the chooser for who came to this tournament. Um, and he chose the best of the best and Johnny Cage is like as I've already said is the one that like everyone else Isn't really sure on. like they just view him as like as this normal human like he has no special Like a gift or power that can get him through this tournament and he will just be one of the first people to like He'll be just one of the first people to die in this But that's not the case at all um and you and Raiden was right because there's a scene in this where all of that, all, where all of that changes, and um, Johnny Cage just starts tearing fist through all these um, creatures. 
Um, so yeah, I, I really like that. Like um, Johnny Cage and Scorpion are the two highlight characters here because Scorpion has has the best story in this movie, which isn't finished because that will um, continue over to the next movie if they ever do make it. Um, and, and, and then Johnny Cage, because he kind of discovers his powers from being stupid, which is, I, which I, I, I like that idea, um, from being the one who just, who, who wants all the attention, who's like the movie star type of character, like he has all the money, he's the one wearing the shades, and he's just like, he's all cool guy here, um, and then... Yeah, and then he realizes like how serious this game is, um, and so the twist in this movie is that Quan Chi um, actually killed Scorpion's wife. Like it wasn't Sub Zero. Uh, Sub Zero killed his son, but Quan Chi killed his wife. And like there's like there's just, there's so many moments in this movie where. Like where Quan Chi, like it, where you can just tell, like where you can just tell, there's like there's a flame inside of um inside of Scorpion that is just going to explode any moment now because Quan Chi is like throwing all these like all these all these lines and saying all this stuff to Scorpion that is like really getting on his nerves. Like he's saying that, let's he's saying like um like I hope you put up a better fight than your wife did, and like that's what really like explodes, um Scorpion, um, but yeah, Quan Chi actually killed Scorpion's um wife, and, and then at the end of this movie, Scorpion went all flaming skull on Quan Chi. Like he ripped his face off, and he he just he flame he went full on flaming skull on Quan Chi. Um, which, which I really I really like this ending because um, it leaves a satisfying note on Scorpion's character because he. Um, because he, because he he doesn't die a coward like he's not afraid to die so he dies um getting revenge on his getting revenge on his son and wife he like he stays even though this building is um like falling down on him like very quickly um he like he he like he fights as a, he fights as a warrior he stays and fights he doesn't coward out because then there would be like there would be this guilt that he had the chance to kill Quan Chi, but um he like then he didn't take it and then he would just have to live with that that he didn't get revenge, um and so him him dying a hero and not a coward off was a really great ending for uh, Scorpion's character and then obviously the ending of this movie is um is we see Shao Kahn he's basically saying that he's basically saying that like that let me finish this that um that that, that you that you were useless and now it's my turn to finish this off so yeah we are definitely getting a sequel um hopefully coming out this year because this movie I had an absolute blast with. Like this movie has some highly entertaining sequences. It's it stays very uh, it stays very faithful to its source material. It has a great story packed with action and emotion. It has great characters. It has great lore built within this story. Um, and this movie is only, how long is this movie? Um, this movie's only 76 minutes long. So it's not a long movie at all, but I could have gone for like another 20, 30 minutes of this movie. Because this movie feels so, so short, even shorter than 76 minutes. Because it, because it goes by so fast, like the times goes by so fast. Because this movie, it be, it keeps up with with the pacing. Like there's not one moment in this movie where it feels dull or uh, or it drops down to a slower pace. It's it's the it's the same fast and accurate pace all throughout. 
Um, and so it doesn't slow down. It has perfect timing for like for all of for all of the fights, uh, for all the fight sequences. I had an absolute blast with this movie. I was surprised at how much fun I had with this movie and how and how it it, it stays very faithful to its source to its based on source material. So, yeah, um, anyways, they're my thoughts on Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. Um, I'm really looking forward to a sequel if we do get that. So anyways, guys, um, yeah, that is my review for Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge. If you have seen it, let me know down in the comments. What do you think of it? Do you like it? Are you mixed on it or do you really not like it? Let me know all your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section down below. So anyways, guys, I hope you have a good rest of your day, evening or night, wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye.